great talk? So much. All right, I'll be brief. Not many people know this, but uh, can we get the feedback fixed on that a little bit? I appreciate it. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, good. Not many people know this, but I was initially inspired to look into Dr. Shermer's works many, many years ago when I saw his image appear to me in my plate of pad thai. <laughs> <laughs> It's not every day that you get asked to do an introduction for one of your intellectual heroes, so this is a great honor for me. And in case you're unfamiliar with Dr. Shermer's work, he's the founding publisher of Skeptic Magazine and the editor of Skeptic.com, monthly columnist for Scientific American, and an adjunct professor at Claremont Graduate University and Chapman University. His latest book is The Believing Brain, From Ghosts and Gods to Politics and Conspiracies, How We Construct Beliefs and Reinforce Them as Truths. He's also written The Mind of the Market on Evolutionary Economics, Why Darwin Matters, Evolution in the Case Against Intelligent Design, The Science of Good and Evil, one of my favorites, and Why People Believe Weird Things, just to name a few. Dr. Sherman received his BA in Psychology from Pepperdine University, his MA in Experimental Psychology from California State University, Fullerton, and his PhD in History of Science from Claremont Graduate University. He was a college professor for 20 years, and since his creation of Skeptic Magazine, he's appeared on such shows as The Colbert Report, 2020, Dateline, Charlie Rose, and Larry King Live, but proudly, never Jerry Springer. <laughs> Dr. Sherwood was also the co-host and co-producer of the 13-hour Family Channel television series, Exploring the Unknown. On a more personal note, Dr. Sherwood's works had a profound effect on my life. As a 20-year martial arts athletic, combat athletics coach, I can tell you that with the exception of alternative medicine and, of course, religion, <clears throat> you'd be hard-pressed to find another activity that contained more superstition than the martial arts do. And his work has helped me articulate to people over the years things that are functional and what's actually just a choreographed fantasy. And as someone raised in a religious household, his writing on religion was a huge relief for me. But of all the things I've learned from Dr. Sherman, I think there's three key points. And these are really short, but I think important. The first one is, you never have to believe in the absurd in order to value the profound. The real reality, the facts about the universe we live in, the earth that we're on, is far more awe-inspiring, far more majestic and profound than any of the religious myths you've ever been told about. So if for some reason you're worried that skepticism will somehow take away that sense of awe, that sense of mystery, don't be. Because the opposite is definitely true. Secondly, with skepticism in general and, of course, critical thinking, it's always the process that matters. It's not so much the conclusion that we come to, but the way that we arrive at that conclusion, the method that we use. And Dr. Sherman has certainly been a pioneer in articulating to people the wisdom of that method. And last, but certainly not least, maybe most important, if what we're sincerely interested in is the truth, in the fact sense of that word, then of course we always have to be willing to revise our own beliefs in the face of new evidence no matter how badly we want that belief to be true. As Clarence Darrell once said, just think of the tragedy of teaching children not to doubt. And in a world filled with homeopathy, religion, astrology, psychics, energy medicine, apocalypse, fear, ghost chasing, faith healing, feng shui, magic underwear, Scientology, numerology, witchcraft, ancient aliens, and Aikido. <laughs> Dr. Schumer offers doubt, and doubt is far, far more important. And the last thing I think I've learned from him, having watched his lectures and debates and interactions with people, Deepak Chopra and others, <laughs> is that we never have to sacrifice the truth, or even bluntness, in order to be a nice person, or to be kind. 
and I submit Michael Shermer's evidence to that fact. So please join me in a huge round of applause for Dr. Michael Shermer. of uh, skepticism, I can see that. <laughs> hey, it's great to see everybody. We've had a great time here in Portland for the last uh, couple of days. Of course, I go to Powell's every time I get a chance. It's the best bookstore north of Los Angeles. 